Welcome to the director's cut of Poker After Dark. I'm Shauna Hyatt. This past week, six elite poker pros each bought in for $20,000 and sat down for an exclusive game of No Limit Texas Hold'em. This week's table featured some of the world's finest. Gus Hansen, Phil Hellmuth, Sean Chacon, Annie Duke, Steve Zolotow, and Huck Seed. Tonight you'll see highlights and behind the scenes footage from an explosive week of Poker After Dark. Well, the great thing about playing in this tournament is you have to use all kinds of different strategies, just depending on your opponent. So, if your opponents are playing one way, you need to adjust and play another way. If they're playing this way, you need to play that way. And it's actually pretty exciting. There's a lot of strategy involved, and all of the players are kind of known players with a known style. Like, what is going on here? This week started with a lighthearted atmosphere and plenty of friendly banter between the players. Each player bought in for $20,000, and with the blinds at 200 400 Gus Hansen was the early chip leader. We were playing at the Horseshoe during the World Series. Have you been huh? around 10 years? Unfortunately, much longer. <laughs> no, you haven't. You're like around eight years. Eight years? No. Longer than that. On the flop, I was going to put in about 23,000. That was about the same on the turn. Then Phil Helmuth tried to set a trap for Sean Chacon by not raising before the flop with his pocket queen. Total tournaments. Phil's queens were still best on the flop, but Sean had a huge draw. The ten of diamonds seemed harmless, and Phil bet out. Sean made the call. And when the deuce of clubs hit the river, Sean made a flush, and Phil's plan had backfired. Phil bet out 1,200. Sean promptly raised it up to 4,000. And Phil knew he was in trouble. Phil gave it a lot of thought, but in the end, he made the call, nice call. Oh, and that's flush. when things went south. Good hand. Thank you. Good call, though. F***ing genius. Excuse me, America. What's going on here? You just keep pounding on Phil over there. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know why the pot is so small. He flopped the set, and you have a flush? I mean, how is the pot so small? Really? He has a set? America! I love America, land of opportunity and justice for all. Sean's actually a nice guy, despite his table persona, and I like him. So, you know, it was nice that I wasn't, you know, getting that kind of needling in my direction. It was loud enough without it being directed at me. I didn't have anything, man. I had my usual nothing against you. Really? Yeah. I have six high. You can be six high? I had six high beat, yeah. After Phil and Sean broke the hand down, things started to get personal. <laughs> yeah, give me some rope. The rope's getting the rope's getting pretty short over there. We gotta miss you, Philly. At least I am. You have no idea, son. Really. Son, son, Sean Sheik the Great. Yeah, Sean the Great strikes <laughs> Sheik the Great. Is that 
The message just came across her earpiece to keep Phil in the game, otherwise the ratings go down. You're right. That's right, I'm busting. Yeah, that was thank very thoughtful of me. I mean, what is going on, Gus? It's insane. How do you get to, how do you get such great starting hands well, and so keep what? losing with them? And keep losing with them. The guy's got two outs, three every freaking hand. It's just two outs. I had open the stretch on a flush. What are we talking about, bro? Though the poker continued, the focus remains squarely on Phil and Sean. You know, before you learn, win, you gotta learn how to lose gracefully, at least. And you ain't graceful. There's nothing worse than a bad winner, Sean. And that's what you and Mike Matisau are. And I think you know that, too, by the way. Phil, so you know why you love me, right? Because you're not one of the nicest guys in the world. 4,000. Yeah, I know you know that, right, Phil? I can honestly say that, that it's been a long time since I lost a big pot. Yeah, Phil. I can honestly say it's been a long time since I lost a big pot. And had uh, and had somebody uh, act like that. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry, Philly, if I offended no, you. No, I mean it's all right. That's you. That's your style, man. Just for TV, though. I right. got misunderstood. So are they getting under you your skin? No, not really. I mean, it's it's a Sean has a Sean has a habit of he's a very bad winner, and that's and that's you know and that's no one's ever accused me of being a bad winner ever, and. Uh, Mike Matisau is the same way, the mouth. They're bad winners, you know. And he, when you beat a guy at pot, just say, just take the money, especially considering what he beat, you know. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. The public, the public saw what I had that hand, so. But it's okay, though. I like, I like Sean. He, he'll never get to me in a million years. He can't. So he's lucky right now. He's been lucky. I mean, he's, he's playing pretty good, though. You know, I mean, he played that last time good. But you're still going to win the table. Well, I have eight or nine thousand left, so we'll see. Well, good luck. Sean Chacon is a bit controversial uh, at times. He's he's a bad winner, which I don't like. Now, I'm a bad loser, yes, but at least you've won my chips when I'm going a little bit crazy, you know. And and so I, I don't respect that part of his game being being a bad winner. He's a nice guy. I love playing with Phil. He's a funny guy, especially when he loses. It's really it's the funniest thing in the world when he's losing and always blames other people for like you know how bad they play and stuff like that. So Steve Z. Didn't Mr. Just, Steve didn't Z. I didn't I just proclaim my proclaim my love for all of you? For a while it looked like peace would prevail and Phil had calmed down. Didn't I just proclaim my love? <laughs> Steve, you're funny. I swear to God. That was until he picked up Ace 10 on the button. Trees in Costa Rica together. With Gavin, with Gavin, among others. Gavin. Gavin Smith. Who's he? Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Right, Smith and Jones. Alias Smith and Jones. He might be one of the worst players in the world. Well, that big hand against Annie, I uh, had ace 10, and I raised on the button. And then, but I thought about it beforehand. I thought, okay, if I raise, what am I, how much should I raise? Should I just call? Because ace 10 on the button's a tricky hand. He's had uh, a very good successful tournament record. All right. I purposely overraised the Kings because I thought that Phil was relatively pot committed and a bigger raise usually signals a weaker hand anyway. So if I raise 3,000 or 4,000, he's only got 5,000 left, so it doesn't really matter. So I kind of wanted to make my hand look weaker. As if the table talk wasn't tough enough, the poker got tough on Phil as well, and the pressure began to mount. Four thousand more. I felt like I was setting this up. How can I possibly bail? Annie's most likely going to re-raise me if she has any ace at all, maybe even king, queen, or king jack. Another one of those unsuccessful fill traps. The ropers. I think for now we should let him think. Give him a break. He's had a tough day. It's only one decision. There's only one decision left, so. Yeah, you. Yeah, we shouldn't say that. So then you think we should just try and, you know, you're going to fall out of the love category if you keep that up. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah, Sean, would you please mind this time? Fighter. Please, please be quiet. Annie's basically moved me all in. She raised 4,000 my 6,300. It's the one time where I really needed some time to think about the hand. 
And Sean starts talking. I said, Sean, please be quiet. This is a key situation. He respected that, and he shut up for a second. So 4,000 more, huh? And then I started talking to Annie. The minute I did, Huck said something. He's like, oh, you just want to shut up so you can talk. Please be quiet so I can talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't want to shut up So for that reason. I want, to, I want to shut up so I can focus on what she has. And then Gus started talking, and then maybe Steve Z finally joined in. You know, and that's bad poker etiquette. I did ask at one point for everyone to be quiet, to give them a little time to think. Core meltdown seemed inevitable. Uh, is this the way it's going to be every tournament uh, out here or what? It only, Seriously. It only gets worse from here. I mean, I could see if you said, please be quiet so you could stop and think, you know what I mean, Phil? But then you started going on and on. I mean. Maury, are you going to give penalties for this or what? <laughs> Phil's blood began to boil. He made, he, he, he made it, he decided for three minutes no one said one word. We all walked over there. Is this, is this a Maury? Is this the way it's going to be or not? I want to know. Shauna, the feistiness just went up a notch. We, we increased the feistiness. No, I want to know because, you know, I played poker for 20 years and never has someone just like blatantly talked as much as this when I have a key decision. It's ridiculous. I haven't said a word, Phil. We talked about Maury, is this the way it's going to be? <laughs> More, I want to know Maury? because I, because you know what I might not play in another one if it's going to be like now this. everybody was kind of pulling his leg so I think it kind of got to him got him frustrated and I think he got a little too aggravated this is not poker when you have it I'm trying to make a tough decision for all my chips I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go with it and I've got him talking and him talking and everybody's joking and, and people laughing. are laughing it's just hard people are having hard. fun well, you think, mean, you know, it's you think, terrible you think, I mean I'm really I'm not upset I might sound upset I'm not upset <clears throat> I did that. I said please. I didn't I didn't hear the please word, but if you say please, I hey, I won't say a word. No Maury, I want to know what you have in place for next time. I guess you can verify that I tried to clear it for and what you. Happens you know, if I and I said we and, and they continue to before. talk. When someone asks the table to be quiet in a key situation, everyone is quiet. I played for twenty years. When that happens, the floor man comes out and they make everybody be quiet so you can study. Let's have a moment. You, I can't use my reading abilities in poker anymore if they want to talk to it. <laughs> reading abilities? Now what ended up happening is I got off kilter. I didn't know what to do. God damn, I gotta get Why a drink. Why don't you shut the up? And the gloves came off. Can you say that on TV? That's out of line, Phil. That's you're that. out of line. And I you're too say, stupid to know. I didn't say a word to you. You're just jumping down my throat for no reason right now. For no reason? For no reason. You got you playing bad, you got losing hand, and you're just trying to get some TV time. Mock your hand, idiot. Phil all of a sudden freaked out, and I don't know if he was freaking out more at Sean or at Gus, who, you know, said to him, oh, are you trying to trap again? You know, because it was like the second time that he had said that he was trapping and someone moved in on him. I've been playing poker 20 years. I don't know how many times it's happened to me where I'm making a decision for my chips and everybody talks. Like zero times. Now I asked him to shut up. I've made twenty million dollars on my reading abilities and understanding. Reading the abilities. And now I gotta and now and now I gotta get insulted about that too, right? This is gonna cost me the pot again, Sandy. She's moving with any ace. I already know that. I set it up. I'm sitting here with ace ten. Phil still had a decision to make. I, I can't even make a decision anymore. This is bull. Now, now I have to let her win the pot with ace eight because I can't think it out, right? And I decided, you know, the safest play was just to fold the hand. Whereas, you know, even though I thought she might have ace seven or ace eight, because I couldn't finish my read. And what they did to me was not right. You know, I think Phil was kind of tilted in the first place. Phil, he should try out for being a clown. Actually, he ain't got to try it. Just, just, I mean, if he acts the way he acts, he could make the circus no problem. I would call that one of the biggest overreactions I've ever seen. If he got upset at all the noise and made the wrong decision, let's say it had been right for him to call with ace 10, then he would say later, well, I made the wrong decision, but I made it because there was so much noise. If he had made the right decision, then he would say, I'm such a great player, and I made the right decision, even though there was all this noise and controversy going on around me. So he kind of protected himself against making a mistake on camera. 
It's simple. I'm trying to make a decision. I've raised with ace-10. Annie's moved all in. I'm pretty sure she's going to move on with any ace, maybe king-queen, maybe a small pair, which would all be kind of an easy call for me. I just want to think. That's all. And they're talking and talking and talking. That's not poker. You can mark that and put that in the show. Bill walked off with chips on the table. Find out what happened next when we return. You're watching the director's cut of NBC's Poker After Dark. After walking off the set, Bill Helmuth blew off some steam and returned. But he wouldn't take a hand until he told his side of the story to our Shauna Hyatt. I've been playing poker 22 years in poker tournaments. I've never, I've never ever seen it in 22 years where you didn't, where, where the table wouldn't shut up. In 22 years. I've never walked out of a poker tournament in the middle before. I left once or twice after or in between things. And that was, that was a bunch of BS. You know, Sean Chacon is not only a poor loser, but he just, he won't shut up. But it wasn't just Sean, it was everybody. I mean, I, mean, I didn't say a word. Why are you picking on me, Phil? You play back, you want to blame your, your bad play on me? You're way out of line. Can I, can I talk, Sean, or Why do you want to come up here and say something? Me, you play bad, you want to... Do you want to look at I, your Wait hand a minute, up? I do want to look at my hand. I told, I thought, I thought... Because he can TV time? We play poker, bro. You understand me? Sit your ass down and play poker. Sean, you're, 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 you are, you're the worst ever, all right? Well, how long does he get to wait more? You want your hand or not, Phil? We're on a clock, right? The blinds are going up, right? Can I you thought, stop the I, clock? I, thought, I was told that if I came over here, Annie, can they stop the clock? are you trying to... You you I want them the to stop the clock. You can you take understand as, the rules? You can take as much time as you want. Do you understand want. the rules? I can take as much time as I want. No kidding. To me, actually, uh, Phil went a little over the line. I mean, basically, it was a nice atmosphere. Everybody was kind of joking and laughing. Of course, taking the game seriously. But it was kind of like I said, a nice atmosphere. And it seems like I think it got a little bit to him that he didn't get the break on the cards and he was losing and he was a short short stack don't yell at me I want to know if they're stopping the clock while you're talking okay that's a fair point that's all that I want to know okay, that's, that's all fair. I said are they stopping the clock while he's taking his time to look at his hand that's all what is it? can you find the answer out the it? thank you the nice. okay then I don't really care he can take as much time as he wants can the I get nice a diet coke be able to watch well, I mean this is this 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 is more this is more like the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, you know. I mean, look at this guy. You, you got the, you got cheeky way out of line here, and it's getting ridiculous. I mean, this, this is, this is not poker anymore. It's, it's like, it's like the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Well, why don't you get back we, there and play some cards? Are we gonna play poker? Can when I, when I have a, when I have a big decision? I would love to watch you play cards. I would love to actually play the game and not and not and not have it be the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Right. Well, good luck, Phil. I think this explains it all here. Bill finally <laughs> got his side of the story out and returned to the table, where it looked like he and Sean would make up and a poker game might actually break out. I didn't know that about you. We'll come back. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> come back, dog. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, you should know that when you have three children, you're used to making peace in these little family squabbles. Peace in the village. Everybody's happy. Annie raised it up in late position with pocket threes. Is that legal? I don't think so. Yeah, 8 to 17. 16. It's advanced math, but it's 8 yeah, to 17. It just seems so low. Some of the best minds in the generation have been working on it for years, and they can't figure it out. Great, great mathematicians, great scientists. I got it. Gus Calder out of the big blind. No. You don't ever want to see a she get political, do you? You can be seen but not heard. Sean, you got what you wanted, Sean. I mean, you know, you you get to, you get to look like more of a jerk on national yeah, television. On national TV, meanwhile. It was me, was it? Huh? It was Phil, me, I didn't say a word to you. I didn't say one word. Ask the whole table. They'll agree. That I didn't say one word to you. Not one. Like right now, Phil. Phil and Sean, it will, it will be on TV, and we can all review the videotape and see who was out of line. That's where. right. All I ask for is that the decorum of poker and the rules and the etiquette is followed. That's all I ask for. I think I, think I really played this hand for it. So. I, I played it back because I didn't realize it was... I, Annie took the, the pot from Gus with a bet on the turn. 
Sean couldn't stand peace in the village, and Bill needed a drink. It worked out. I mean, I made more money because of it, but... Well, there was so much distraction. It was like I need a cocktail waitress over here. It was Let's a, do a lot shot. Of, Sean, there was a lot of distraction, you know. See, so that's what Phil is talking about. A lot of distraction. You just can't Can think I have a straight. So waitress? please be quiet. Yeah, right. I want a white Russian, please. Uh, I'm taking the blame for it, however. I, it was completely my fault, however. I hope this all makes the show exactly the way it happened. You're gonna feel so bad about yourself afterwards. Yes, it damn, that was really a... No, I hope it all makes a show. It's not cut some clever way. That's what I hope. Hi. Hi. Is that the key to your heart? This is the key to my heart. This is me and my boyfriend. Yeah. Joe and Amy with yeah, the key to my heart. There. You got lucky that all that erupted. I didn't have a chance Phil, to Phil, I had you buried, and you weren't ever calling. Oh, what, are you just, what are you even answering here? Um... These are all my children. So this is this is Maude, Leo, Lucy, and Nellie, and there's my heart. Four, those Four are kids. those yeah. are all your children. They look yeah. like little charms. I know. You should get the real children. So I, I wear this every day, and I. He's the sweetest guy in the world. When I have my um, little girl, you give me a little card. Oh. While Sean, Annie, and Steve explored their softer sides, Phil turned to the hard stuff. I need a white Russian, please. Yeah. Make it a double. Looking for it. What's, what's he drinking? The whole table gets to know. And then things finally came to a climax. Hi, Phil. Sean, you, you have no class at all, dude. No. Really? Yeah. You're full of it, right? Yeah. You're full of it, right? And he wants to tell me I got no class. He's the one with no class. He asked me. Phil moved all in with Ace-5, and Sean immediately called with pocket seven. Well, wait, wait, let's talk about this hand right before you see the flop. Let's talk about this hand right here, Phil. Are you in the lead right now or not? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the hand before you lose. Or you might get, you might suck it, I don't know. You might get lucky, God knows. Where's the rope at? Where's that rope at, guys? Are you gonna be a poor winner again? I'm a poor loser. You already said that on TV. I gotta play the part. Well, he's already established that he wants to talk about it before the flop. Let's talk about the hand. I mean, this is your hand. This is my hand. Who's in the lead right now, Phil? Spades. He's, he's leading in spades. He is. He, no, he's leading in straight possibility. I'm in straight draw, too. I'm leading in the high spade category. He's leading in over cards. Who is only, what is, the, what is the game where the high spade gets half the pot? If we're only playing that game. I think this game. hand is like a three to one favorite. Yeah, I think that's about right. If I did There's my math five. right. Phil had a glimmer of hope when he flopped a pair of fives. That's true. Straight. I got a straight over here going. Yeah. You got the straights going. Six of clubs. Be a gen card for me. Six of clubs. Whoa. But the seven of hearts on the turn gave Sean Chicon a set and eliminated Phil Hellmuth. Gus, pleasure playing with you, sir. Duke. My pleasure, as always, Steve. Yeah. My pleasure. We'll get him next time. Huckleberry. Good to see you, Phil. Hey, hang in there, buddy. I like. I love the way you're playing. Okay. Don't tell anybody any of your hands, all right? <laughs> We're down to just five players when the director's cut of NBC's Poker After Dark returns. Most poker players know Gus Hansen's reputation. He plays a lot of trash hands. So when Steve Z moved all in with King Jack after Gus raised, Steve must have been surprised to see what Gus had. In, in tournament poker, one of the crucial things is how much you have in chips compared to how big the blinds are. At the time of my demise, I had about 7,000 in chips and the Lines were eight and sixteen hundred, which means it costs twenty four hundred a round, which means if I fold every hand, I can last about two and a half rounds. Even if I win a pot, I won't have enough to be a contender, so I have to find something to play very quickly. Gus has been raising a lot, and I know he's a very aggressive player, and he raised from the cutoff, that's the seat next to the button, so he could pretty much have any hand. 
I looked down and found King Jack offsuit, which is not a particularly good hand. Okay, I might have the best hand, you never know. See, you finally took a stand like a man. That's, yeah. I like that. And I hope that either A, he was completely stealing, or B, he had a, a hand like, let's say, a pair of sixes or a pair of eights, where his hand and my hand are close to even. And then I wanted to just, you know, do the coin flip to see if I'd be back in contention or I'd be gone. I, mean, I played a little different style than uh, what I actually usually do, but that was kind of to uh, kind of give the other players a kind of different uh, look on things, on how I play. I mean, they always perceive me as very aggressive, and I tried to play fairly tight in the beginning. He turned out to have ace-king, which had my hand totally dominated. They say a hand is dominated when... You know, we both have a king in common, and he has an ace. So, as actually happened, the king came, but his ace dominated my jack, and he won easily. Wow. Got me crushed. One more blunder. I would have moved in with that too, Steve. I have a chance. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Not a big one. Hey, relax. You don't want your hand, I'll take it. No, I like my hand. You gotta be a man strong. Expect to win. Have some grit. Both Gus and Steve completely Ten. missed the flop. Straight throw. Ten is the most exciting card, I will give you that. It is the most exciting card. How about a lady? Lady or seven is... Yeah, but it's not It's exciting for the crowd. That's kind of interesting. That doesn't change a thing, does it? <laughs> then they both hit a king on the turn, but Steve would need a jack only to win the pot and stay alive. Only a jack, I would say. You're a jack? If my calculations are correct. The picture card comes up. He's only a five. Four of diamonds nine. didn't do it. King is up. Doesn't so we split the pot? King is up? I love playing with Steve Z. He's fun to play with. He's a funny character, real nice guy. And with that, Gus Hansen eliminated Steve Zolotow and took over the chip lead from Huck C. Oh, well, where are you these days, Caesars or back at Plaza? You call, you have my number, call me. Okay. I'm not going to call you, I'm going to raise you. All right. We'll be back with four players when the director's cut of NBC's Poker After Dark continues. Sean Sheiky played well all week, but when the blinds got high, he was the victim of some bad luck at the hands of Huxy. Well, I made a tiny raise on the button with Queen Jack suited, and then Gus was going to call with 9-7 suited, but he kind of smelled, you know, that Sean was going to do something. I'm all in. Sean said all in. How much more you got? It's a little over 12. And then Sean re-raised me 12 more thousand. I was getting two to one with Queen Jack suit. I couldn't, couldn't dream of throwing it away unless he turned up like two kings or something. So, you know, luckily for me, he had ace king. I was in pretty decent shape. How much is in there? This was the biggest pot of the match so far. Shiki had the best hand with ace king. But if it didn't hold up, he'd be making an early exit. 4,400. Give you some greens if you win. I like greens. Huck hit a monster flop with top two pair, but Shiki still had outs. Nope. He got some back doors. Ace of, Ace of spades is really exciting, actually. Much more exciting than the Jack of Diamonds. Ace of spades is the most exciting card. The seven of diamonds on the turn left Cheeky needing a 10 for a straight. There's only one exciting card now. The 10. And that was it for Cheeky. He was eliminated in fourth place. Hey, nice playing with you. I guess he outplayed me. No. It just, you know, it was, a, it was a race and he won the race. There's no, it's just, I'm just, you know, I lost the pot, I'm out, so. There's not much more to say about that hand. It's poker, it happens. Welcome back to the director's cut of NBC's Poker After Dark. 
Well, I mean, we got down to three-handed. It was me and Huck and Annie Duke, and I knew she was kind of ready to to push her chips. It seems like she was the uh, least patient of the of the three of us left. You know, coming into the last hand that I played, I only had like 22,000, and the blinds were one in 2,000, so I'm really in a move-in or fold situation. And on the button, you know, I'm going to move in with most hands. So when I looked down at Jack-10, I was actually really happy. <laughs> I'm all in. All in? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I have like 22, I think. You don't seem very happy about it. <laughs> I, so far, it looks like a call. <laughs> so far, it looks like a call. Yeah, it was a call. Yes, a call. I basically felt like I didn't need too much to call, and when she moved all in, the blinds were fairly high, and she moved in for like 22,000. And I had a king 10, which is a very reasonable hand. It's three-handed. She could have a wide variety of hands. Of course, when she turns over a jack 10, I'm very and happy. Guess he has the best hand. He has a much That's better gorgeous. hand than me. Wasn't the easiest call. You know, unfortunately, Gus had a dominating hand, and that's just the way that that works, you know. My career, I've won a lot of those Jack-10s, so. <laughs> <laughs> the flop didn't look good for Annie Duke. It's not the flop you wanted. Not even a backdoor straight or anything. No, not a lot of hope. Oh, that gave you a little. No, it didn't. Three. Oh yes, that's true. You can hit a three or a jack now. Or a ten. Or a ten. That was a good court. I mean, I mean, the jack was a nut. The four of spades couldn't bail out Annie, and she was sent home in third place, leaving Gus Hansen and Huck Seed heads up. Overall, not judging too much by the result, but more of the the play and the kind of way I perceived her at the moment, I think I made the right call. Welcome back to the director's cut of NBC's Poker After Dark, where Gus Hansen holds a huge chip lead in his heads-up battle for $120,000 with Hug C. Alright, we're working in the right direction. In a win-of-take-all situation like this, you don't really care if you get knocked out as number six, number five, four, three, or two. There's only one, I mean, no points for second place. It's win-of-takes-all. One good one so far, this could be it. Ooh, I think I, I, think I have to call. Yep. Call. That's it? Oh my god. Don't tell me you have the queen rag. I mean, no, no. Oh, you have an overcar. You're fine. I mean, we're it's good. not the end of the world. You're, you're so good right now. Well, you waited patiently. I waited and waited and waited for the big pair, and it came. Threw away. I wasn't going to lay it down. No, if you raise and I go all in, you're pretty much trapped in there. You could have limped, I guess. Gus had an overcard, but the flop was no help. Then you still would want to call me anyway, probably. Yeah, I could have played it differently. No, that was a cooler. All these small hands for nothing. Oh, wow. That doesn't well, help. did that help me or not? Not really. Sort of. I mean, the 10 ball is working now. Gave me four outs. Okay, 33. In prior action, Gus Hansen steadily chipped away at Huck Seed's stack to take the chip lead. But with this pot, Huck leveled the playing field. Man, this silly greens here. 31-6. 31-6. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of that. this, this cat. Oh, not the cash again. <laughs> One, 
That's not Six. right. You're leaving with no chips. Ah, uh, yeah. It's psychological. When a guy has no chips, he just feels like he has no chance. Uh, I chose the wrong time. Huck won a big pot from Gus, and Shauna had the update. Huck's seed just doubled up when his pocket queens held up against Gus's king ten. The players are almost dead even, and it's still anybody's game. Now it's getting silly. With $120,000 up for grabs, the blinds were at 3000 6000 Huck's seed was on the button, first to act. Uh, I mean, the blinds had just gone up to three and 6000 There's 9000 laying in the middle, and we both have, you know, 50 or 60 to work with. So a king jack or a seven or huge hands, you know, we're just looking to get it all in before the flop. You, pay all of it. you didn't see that, right? I kind of flashed it. No. Huck Seed uh, is one of my uh, old friends. Actually, when I first came to Vegas, started playing a lot of poker, uh, we were actually roommates. Uh, I stayed with him, and. Uh, when he won the World Series of Poker back in 96, and uh, I was there, I, I actually had a little piece of him rooting for him, so I actually learned a lot of poker from Huck Seed. Okay, I'll learn. That was the first one. <laughs> Do you have to look at the second one? I mean... I call. <laughs> did you, were you, you got me, but I mean, I actually had a pretty good hand. So I had King Jack first, so I had to decide if I was going to just limp in and hope to trap him. I'm praying you go all in so I can call you so fast. I mean, or just move it in. So I just moved it in, and he called with A7. Do you want diamonds or not? I mean, Yeah, diamonds. I have to gamble with, with two diamonds on the flop. I think I can gamble with that. For sure. So there really you know, was no choice on his part. It was just a matter, he was raising a lot of hands out of position against me. So to kind of fight that, I could have just limped in and just hope he raised and then be all in. But I just decided he might not raise, you know, because he had raised so many in a row, he might not do it again with nothing. So I just put it all in. This is a big gamble here. Oh, what a flop for you. Well, the seven doesn't matter. Run it twice from here? No. <laughs> Seven doesn't really matter. I need a queen. Queen is an exciting card. That, I mean, king or jack is kind of ices everything. Man, nah, that's not looking good. I think Hawk played very well uh, during the entire during the entire show. Hep. It's a river. Oh, come on. The deuce of clubs meant Huck lost the pot, and now his back was up against the wall. 34. Yeah. I buy a lot. No. So how much I got to put in? 6,000? I got to put in a third of my stack. I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty much in this pot, it looks like. I'm getting two to one, right? If you move in. It was now yeah. Gus's shot at $120,000. And Ace it. Jack was more than enough oh, to push Huck all not in. Anything really ugly, I gotta call you. First one's not good. Second one was pretty nice. I probably shouldn't even call this out. I hope it's an ace. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, that's... I'm less than a two to one dog, right? That's, that's, a, that's probably a close one. I think you have to. Call? Yeah. A good chance you got an under. Plus, sometimes I have two fours. I think you were going to fold like little, real little ones. Like that. I kind of had to adjust a little bit, and I kind of went into the same mode of limping a lot. And in retrospect, I think he uh, kind of got a little bit the best of me. He got a couple of good bets on the river against me. Uh, but. I think I had the better of the hands and the heads up, which is very important. I mean, sometimes one guy has the ace kings and the other guy has the king jack. So it, uh, it turned out good for me, but I think uh, he actually played very well and uh, I got a little bit lucky at the end. It's no good for me. Gus, you're too lucky. Yeah, I had the best of the hands. Uh, at least I saved something. That's it. Gus Hansen is this week's $120,000 winner. 
outlasting Huxseed and four other top pros. When we come back, this week's champion Gus Hansen sits down with Shauna Hyatt. Welcome back to Poker After Dark. I'm Shauna Hyatt, and I'm sitting here with this week's winner, Gus Hansen. Gus, in the past few years, we've seen you, and you had this really aggressive style. Did we see a new Gus tonight? Uh, well, I mean, all the five other players know me fairly well, and they kind of know the aggressive Gus, and uh, I kind of wanted to give them a little different view upon things, and yeah. uh, I was playing very, very tight in the beginning, just playing really good cards if I got them, and if I didn't, just fold and wait for the next hand, and it, I think it turned out well. I mean, that's a part of poker, kind of give different looks so mm -hmm. they don't know where they have you. Right. And uh, once the blinds got up later in the week, I definitely started being more aggressive. You have to when the blinds get high, but I started out very slow, and uh, it turned out pretty good. Out of all of the players tonight, was there someone that you didn't want to play heads up? Actually, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I think uh, Huxley was playing very, very well uh, during the entire week, and very deservedly he was at the final table amongst the last two heads up. I mean, he played very well, mm -hmm. so actually I probably would have preferred to play one of the other four players, oh, okay. not to put them down or anything, right. they're very good players, but I think he actually played the best poker during the week. So when everything was going down with Phil and Sean, you know, how did you keep yourself clean and all that and stay away from it? Well, I mean, uh, to me, I, I just laughed a little <laughs> bit about it. I mean, they get kind of into things and the heat of things and Phil got a little rowdy and uh, so did Sean. I mean, that's uh, kind of part of their game and yeah. I'm, I'm actually more laid back, easy going, so I like to take it easy. I don't get too involved. I kind of thought it was a kind of funny incident so well congratulations thanks for playing poker after dark Gus Hansen got aggressive at the right time and defeated five other top pros and won this week's table come back on Monday when six new pros will compete for hundred twenty thousand dollar winner take all I'm Shauna Hyatt you've been watching the director's cut of NBC's poker after dark good night Stay tuned tomorrow for more action from Phil Helmuth and company. And these pros, oh sorry, I said Ann. <laughs> if you say you know Gus very well, you're going to get trashed on the internet. Yeah. No, so, solid toe, solid toe, solid toe. Solid tau. Tau? Steve Z Solid tau. Darn it. Welcome back to Poker After Dawn. Dawn, I did it again. Tomorrow night to see if Phil... What? 2000 and zero. What does that mean? <laughs> Huxseed has the lead and held Helmuth. I could have just said Helmuth, but <laughs> I was like looking for the light. I'm like, I'm going to walk around in circles until I find it. <laughs> it's Phil Helmuth against the world. <laughs> How did Phil get uh, like all the props? <laughs> all of, oh, sorry. Welcome back to Poker After Dark. Oh, 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 so what am I saying?